Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> uh, uh, took the snouts off. Now it'll go in the barn, no problem. So me and Pops is going to take it back. Uh, back it in the barn. And bring my 1550 diesel up here. Everything's in there. I did discover... Uh, there's a little bit of a few things that need to be fixed Right there's one um, It needs these bushings here This one's worn through So it, they're the rest of them the same way so might as well get a set of those bushings uh, the outside ones don't need it well yeah, they do. They just need the bushing kit. I don't want to have one for here. Uh, this one. This one. There's only a couple of them that's any good. Like maybe this one. Yeah. That one's good. That one's worn through to the thread. So it just needs a set of them. And it'll get them. But not right now. Right now, it's just get the head back to the woods and in the dry. So we'll be back here in a minute, guys. Hang on. Well, hi, guys. It's about, I don't even know. Oh, 7.30. Uh, had a hitch in the giddy up for the plan to get the corn head put in. Went back to fire the oliver up, and the clutch is stuck. Uh, literally, <laughs> literally cannot do anything about it tonight by myself. I can't ask Dad to do uh, anything like that because, well, that's just a bad idea. So, I guess in the morning my cousin's going to come up. I just got off the phone with him. And uh, I got to take a tractor back, take the 1850 back, nudge against it, take the pressure off the transmission. Where it's sitting, it's a little bit uphill, and its transmission is in reverse, and I can't get it out of gear. So I got to push on it just a little bit to get it to back off, and then start it up in gear, get it outside, shut it off, hook a chain to something, dig like the 1850 pull it and have the clutch shoved in and then whoever's in the 1850 hit the brakes and shock it uh, pop it loose not the first time I've had to do this but that just goes to show how humid and how much moisture is in the air around this part of southwest Ohio. Getting a clutch stuck is getting more and more common. Uh, just, just the way it is. So guys, uh, we'll pick up in the morning. So we'll see you next time, and as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. This ought to make for good video if I can figure out how to film it. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Okay, guys. It's the next day. It's Thursday. Uh, note to self. If you want to cost yourself a lot of time and aggravation, forget to do things like... Turn the fuel tank on. 
Yes, I did. I got all the way back here before it ran out of fuel. And I had to walk my butt all the way back up to the barn, get a few wrenches, come back, and bleed it out. Uh, however, what we are going to try to do is very, very simple. I've got clutch adjusted some. I've tied the clutch pedal down with a chain. I'm going to try to pull it forward to try to get it out of gear. And maybe this will pop it loose. I don't know. So we're going to try this and see what happens. Um, I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we got to try something, so we'll just set you here, and maybe you can see what's going to go on, uh, what's going to go on. Go on.
Okay. So far today, I've only screwed up a couple of times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Main thing was get this. Hopefully, broke free. Uh, it goes to show you how damp it's been around here all summer. So, I'm going to get to 1550, taken up to the barn, back in and parked, because I'm going to have to charge the batteries uh, for sure. Now, I'll walk back here and get the 1850, take it back up. Then I'll come back here with the skid steer, grab the uh, corn head, and back it in. Uh, yeah, it, it's a, just a hundred times simpler to do it with skid steer than it is a tractor. So, I'll be back here in a minute, guys. Hang on. Okay, you guys. Little Geech. Has over half a tank of fuel now. Uh, oil's checked, all that good stuff. So it's ready to roll. Uh, 1550 is in the barn now. Uh, I gotta take this back. Move, put the header wagon in, put the header in the barn, move a few things around while I'm back there, so you don't want to listen to this thing running, so we'll be back here in just a moment, so hang on. Okay, guys, let's get this thing put away. device and voila yeah I'll be done oh get you off this base Uh, 
I really want to get this baler out of here and really go over it good. But that's not a project for now. Tires are going to be the new duels for the 1850. I have a set of T-rail rims up there and the tubes. I got the tires so I might as well put them together. I got all the band clamps, everything else. Or the, oh what do you call them, the you know what I mean. Stuff for that. And the only thing I need to do is get a set of bands made. A little bit wider than the ones I got. So, uh, I'm going to move some equipment, other stuff around while I'm back here. And I know you don't want to watch that, so I'll be back here shortly. Uh may take these up with me thinking about this because it won't take long to clean those rims up cut the other bands off so I'll, I'll be back here in a minute I'll figure out what I'm going to do so hang on well guys one of the things I wanted to get done was move that field calibrator it was sitting over there under them trees and I need to bushwhack it. So I brought it over and put it in front of these trees so I know exactly where it is and it's easy to get to. Now something of note you see the bark about the tire height on that tree how it's tore up? That's from our friendly neighborhood Bobcat. <laughs> Yes, I have a bobcat in this wood somewhere, hanging out. And while I'm back here, I decided to bring these uh, 18434s up front. Uh, these were the tires that were put on the lawn when it was brand new. So, <laughs> they'll make dandy duels. But I got to get them up there so I can mount them. So we'll be back here in a bit, guys. I'm going to have a fun ride <laughs> looking at this. So we'll see you in a few minutes. What kind of critter leaves a turd like that? Obviously, it's been eating a lot of corn, but mighty big to be a coon. Don't know. <sighs> well, this has kind of been one of them days where uh, I'm definitely getting my cardio in. barn back here well yeah back here then back up well actually from right here to the barn and back and now all the way back here to the barn I have walked uh, about a mile and a quarter. Thereabouts. So I've definitely got my cardiovascular workout for the day. <laughs> kind of been the, uh, for those who don't think you get a lot of exercise farming. Prime example. And this is pretty much normal. 
because if you break down you're always always the farthest from your house you can be don't it look like rain now <laughs> that's a 10 foot Glencoe three point that has a bunch of well several international shanks on it that was sitting right in there and I got rid of a tree and a big multiflora rose bush that elm I don't want nothing to do with that uh, the hickory can keep on growing I don't mind good trees growing these are going to have to go if I'm going to do what I want to do So, uh, with that said, wonder what else I can fit in back here. Pretty sure I. Well, hi guys. After getting getting all the stuff moved around back in the barn, getting up here. Draining the 1550 gas, I want to take a sediment bowl off and take a good look in it because I know the filter, the screen in it's shot. So, and I tried to pry around on it trying to get it out and it didn't want to come. So, let's just drain the tank, there wasn't much in it. Uh, just letting it run down into the bucket through the sediment bowl so for, if it plugs up I'm already draining it so it ain't gonna be no big deal so there shouldn't be too much left in there and yes I am using an old uh, hydraulic oil can it still had you know a little bit in it that you can't get out but that's okay there's a five gallon can of gas sitting right there that and that are going back in uh, upper valve lubricant simply put it'll work so as soon as this gets done draining we'll get into it uh kind of an interesting little side note on this tractor since we've got it had it it's dad's this tractor has really not done that much work i mean it has but it hasn't and the way you see it other than the new tires on the front and the new seat and muffler was the way it was when we bought it it's got one of them what do you call it a, a 550 paint job uh, yeah it was brush painted and it used to have a decal right here it said Bradford Farms and the story on this tractor is rather interesting the uh, people who bought it new uh, you'll be able to see me we'll try it there uh, the farm that bought this tractor new 
I believe they told, if I was, what I was told, the tractor was about a year and a half old at this time. And it come off a farm down around Flemingsburg, Kentucky. And there was a fairly good sized farm at the time, several hundred acres. And the boy working there rolled. And I don't, I don't know if it was a farm all H or a farm all M on a hillside. And everybody got scared of this tractor. And they basically sold anything else on the farm that was narrow front and went to wide front tractors, smaller. Well, Ford tractors, basically. And this tractor was used more than anything to run down the road back and forth between fields. Taking hay, taking tobacco, taking ear corn from the field to the barn. That's what this tractor primarily did at that point. Uh, I don't know when, uh, they sold the tractor, traded the tractor to another, this 1550 to another tractor at a local implement dealer, who sold it to a friend of his, who was a junker, and... All this guy used this tractor for was simply one thing. Uh, it was, it had, he put a loader on this tractor like I had on my other 1550. A 1701 International Bucket Trip Loader. And all he did with it was pick scrap up and put it in the truck, his truck, or on his trailer. That's all the tractor did. That was it. That's all it did. Uh, he had it for 15 years, I guess, and probably didn't put 100 hours on it. I mean, that's how little he used it. Uh, he got down with health problems, had to sell it, and a bunch of other stuff, and it went back to the same dealer he got it from to sell it. Now, they had it for sale, I seen it in the Wheeler dealer, which was a, one of the places to find trucks, cars, equipment, you name it. They had everything for sale on there. And uh, called them up. And I went down and looked at it. Well, me and Dad went, drove down there and looked at it. It was a Sunday. They were closed, but we could see the tractor. See what kind of shape it was in. And I called them... The next day, which was a Monday, no, no, no. Yeah, it was a Monday, and uh, talked to him about it, and I basically told him we'd take the tractor. And they were asking uh, 2500 for it. So we basically said, we'll take it. And it was the next morning I got off work. It was a Tuesday morning. Because I was working a 12-hour shift at the time, night shift. And a friend of mine went with me, and we drove down Flemingsburg to get this. Well, as soon as I got there and got on it and started it up, 
Now I told him I want to make sure this is what you say it is, yada, yada, yada. You know, I went outside, started it up, ran good, and turned the steering wheel, and the whole front of the tractor just shifted sideways and back like this. And I knew exactly at that point what was wrong with it. Uh, the bearings in the narrow front were shot. Now, I don't know anything about the farm that this was on other than the name of it, how they took care of stuff, I, no clue. The Junker, the second owner of it, I don't think he did anything but put gas in it and use it. Uh, so, front end, I can understand being like it was. So I went in and talked to the guy. And I said, hey, there's a problem with this tractor. He said, what's that? And I said, the front end shot. He said, what do you mean? I said, come out here, I'll show you. So we walked out, I started it up, took the wheel like this, and the whole front of the tractor's moving sideways. As soon as you start moving the wheel, just like that. I shut it off, and I told him, I said, the bearings in the narrow front are shot. And I know exactly what it takes to fix it. And he says, what, a couple hundred dollars? I said, no, it's more like $450, $500 to put those bearings in that narrow front. I said, I just went through this on my other 1550. It had the same problem. Bearings were bad, and I'd... This was no more than three or four years after I bought it. Uh, no, I had it longer than that, probably about ten years after I bought it. But then, and we're talking, that was probably mid-90s when I did swap that. I bought a wide front end for $400 and put under the tractor. In fact, the narrow front out of my 1550, if you can see it, is sitting right there. Now you're asking why do you have a narrow front in the back of that truck? Well, there was a guy that wanted to buy it. So I loaded it in the back of the truck, went over to his place, he wasn't home, yada, yada, yada for the next year, calling back and forth, calling back and forth, talking about it. And kind of one of those, I don't know what happened to him. Okay, I just never took that front end back out. <laughs> But, knowing what this was going to cost to fix it, I told the guy I'm going to make you an offer on it. Where it is, as is, the way it sits right now. And he says, uh, okay, how much? I said, I'll give you $1,800 for it the way it sits. And he stood there and he said, I knew I shouldn't have bought this damn tractor back. So I'll take it, get it out of here. So, got the money out of my pocket, paid him for me, paid for it. He wrote up a bill of sale. I started it up, drove it up on the trailer, and come home with it. And it's been here ever since. And 
It has the original tack. I hope you can see that. 1174 hours, almost 1175. And those are original hours. To the point of when you go to put this thing in gear, you got to feel for it because it's that tight. And to go up and down, you got to get it in the right spot. There's no slapping this thing around in gear. You got to stop and literally just feel for that to get it in. It's that tight. So, this has the tightest transmission for a 1550 I've ever seen. I mean, it's just that good. Uh, it's kind of been, I know it sounds dumb, but brush paint job and all, which you can kind of see see the brush marks around on it. It's not a bad looking old tractor. And it runs good. And it was cheap horsepower. And this, believe it or not, this is what I like to bush hog with. And not so much right now because I put brand new tires on the front of this a couple years ago. And they're still soft. So you don't want to go through thorns. But the back tires are nice and hard. And this shows that the story I was told about it's true. They run it on the road a lot between fields. I hope that's about out of fuel. So, that's just a little story story time about this old tractor. Uh, like I said, she ain't pretty. But, and you can see the brush strokes. But at least it's got paint on it. So, we'll be back here in a bit, guys. See where we're at on this. So, hang on. Well, hi guys. I went down to McHenry's real quick. Have a new bowl gasket, a new screen to replace that. <laughs> so now I just got to put it all back together and put the gas back in. So, uh, you don't want to watch me do this, so. I'll be back in just a minute. Oh, this was a whole five dollars and thirty cents for the four screen. Screen was four dollars, and the gasket was a buck twenty-five or something, buck twenty. So cheap fix, but well worth it. So I'll be back. Okay, guys, we're gonna try to start it for the first time after having everything apart. So, see what happens. Well, that was easy. I got here to find some action. Well, guys, I run her about an hour doing some bush hogging, and she run like a top. 
So I guess the five dollars, well, ten bucks, to fix the fuel system was well worth it. That's a new screen and a new gasket on the bowl, a new metal gas filter, new gas line. So, yeah, I think it is well worth it. It'll start and run and do what you want it to and just keep right on a rolling. So I'm going to call this one a success. Uh, like I've said before, when you're one person, you get spread mighty thin. And you just literally, there's not enough hours in a day to do everything you need to do. So you, you know, stuff sits and then you got to fix it. And that's what I've been doing all year, fixing. <laughs> little of this, little of that. That's probably the most the tractor's been run in a couple of years, really. Uh, my butt can only sit on one seat at a time. And this one set. Made a video about getting it running, sitting over there in the barn. Uh, working... Going over to points, plugs, everything. Cap and wires. Getting it going again. And it was sitting indoors. But, uh, 1850 did her job this morning. So, you know, why not? Got the, my 1550 diesel, the clutch unstuck. With the help of the 1850. But, of course, I had a... You know, I goofed. I forgot to turn the fuel on. Not thinking. And it caused me to walk all the way up here. Walk all the way back with tools. Get it running. Pull the 1550. Get it fixed. Get it up here. Walk back. Well, go back with a skid steer. And put the wagon, put the corn head in the barn. Move some equipment around back there. Get rid of, do a little tree be gone, a little brush be gone. Uh, get everything back, brought up here. I brought a set of tires up, sitting right over there, that are going to be the duels for the 1850. I uh, just got to get a set of bands made. And I want them wider than that set right there has. So... That'll be easy enough to do. I got this thing figured out and fixed and bush hogged with it. And now that it's about 7 o'clock, it is time to go home. Lock up and go home. I put in a full day. <laughs> so, we'll see you next time, guys. And as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe and this is kind of a typical day for me uh you know a lot of running a lot of doing this that and the other thing and that's how i get stuff done a little at a time so pull up here lock everything up and call it a day so we'll see you next time, guys. And as always, please comment, rate, and subscribe. Yep. I don't throw nothing away, and I find a use for it. <laughs> tires off the lawn are going to be the tires for the duels for the 1850. So we'll see you next time, guys.